dust of Greece and the Acropolis Rally, round seven of the World Rally Championship. This rally is one of the classic events in the championship and takes place on the Greek mainland. The ceremonial start was in the capital Athens, but the action takes place in the hills to the northwest, centered around the host town Itea, with a single service park in the shadow of Mount Parnassos. Day one, six stages, saw plenty of dramas. So far, the season's been dominated by Peugeot, but the championship leader Marcus Bromo ended the day in seventh place, after this spin cost frustrating seconds. Reigning world champion Richard Burns laid one place ahead of his colleague in sixth, leading Finland's Ali Roman Perra to spearhead the French team's challenge in fourth place. Subaru also had a disappointing first day. Peter Solberg had a series of spins that lost well over a minute when Peru refused to start after one of those pirouettes. The fastest time on the day's last stage then suggested the Norwegian still hadn't given up. But team leader Tommy Mackinnon was destined for retirement his fifth of the year. Struggling with power steering and brake problems, he looks down at just the wrong moment. This dip drags the nose of the car sideways and the front wheel is ripped off by a rock. Helpful spectators then allow the wheel to roll down the hillside, leaving the Finn no option but to go and get it, adding insult to injury. The loose gravel covering the road surface penalised those running the first few positions. Those further back on a cleaner line benefited. Thomas Rodstrom, for example, scored City's first faster stage time on gravel, while two of the three Hyundais battled for podium places during the day. Armin Schwarz, though, dropped to seventh after leaving service late, incurring a time penalty. But Freddie Hoyks, another stage winner, would start day two in second place after a great drive. The day, however, belonged to this pair, Marco Martin and his co-driver Michael Clark. Fastest on three of the six stages, their Ford Focus led the rally by over 50 seconds at the end of the day. Their Ford teammates were handicapped a little by their road positions. Poor tyre choice and running in Solberg's dust at one point also slowed Colin McRae, while Carlos Sainz was unhappy at his role as road sweeper. Nevertheless, all three Fords ended day one in the top five. Martin's lead was impressive by any standards, but behind the Estonian, just 21 seconds covered the rest of the point-scoring places. The chasing pack was led by Marcus Gronholm, with both the Citroen Zaras in the top ten, a minute and a half or so down on the leader. Day two promised more dramas. Even hotter than the previous day, this shot of Francois Delacour also shows just how bad the dust was, although the main handicap was still the covering of the stones, which would clear away for the later cars. Six more stages made up day two, beginning to the southwest of the Parnassos service park, before a pair to the east, and then a repeat of the opening two tests, 159 kilometers in all. From a co-driver's point of view, the, the most important thing here is the line, and to read the notes to get a position the car exactly where you want it on the road. If you get out of what we call the line, the ideal place on the road, you're gonna get into trouble. And this is a typical example. If you came around this left-hand corner here and cut the exit of the corner, then this is going to take your wheel off. No question about it. That is the end of your rally. So you have to read the pace note exactly right, and that is probably one of the most difficult things of this rally. One left, tightens, tighten. One, and don't cut. Is getting the cuts, the don't cuts, the keep outs, the keep ins, and all those little fine things have to be spot on. <laughs> Stage 7, Boxites was the day's first, 23 and a half kilometers of fairly open track, but as the virtual spectator shows, it starts with a long, long climb before the road runs along a ridge and then descends into the valley again towards the stage finish. Baking sunshine and little wind would mean the heat and dust would be even worse than on day one. Less than three seconds between you and Freddie, can you catch him today? Uh, yeah, for sure we'll try. Um, first two stages are going to be a good telltale of what's going to happen. Do you think there's any chance of catching Marco today without him having a problem? I don't know because he was driving very well, uh, sometimes much quicker than us, but uh, at least uh, we're going to try and uh, it's also important we can keep the boys behind us. Marco, you've got a lead of 50 seconds, but you can't afford to relax today. No, definitely not. There's no chance to relax. It's a long way to go and uh, Nothing is decided. 
Very, very long pass. The top 15 are running reverse order on days two and three, so it was Mark and Kinoshi on day, which was first into the stage. A persistent electrical fault still hadn't been traced, so the car was down on power, but major work was planned for the next service. In Mitsubishi's case, it was the crews who were down on power. Their hotel kitchen had caught fire overnight, and the drivers and co-drivers had spent over an hour outside while the fire service tackled the blaze. A sleepy Alistair McRae was then only 15 fastest, while Francois Delacour was seven seconds slower. Marcus Grumholm was in the unfamiliar position of being the lowest placed of the three Peugeot drivers. He though was fifth quickest on the stage and moved up to sixth place on the leaderboard. <laughs> Richard Burns knew that his road position was far better than on the previous day and sensed his chance to move up the order. He and co-driver Robert Wood stormed through the stage, setting the fastest time so far and moving from sixth and to fifth. Left. Dimitri right plus in. 20 meter left minus tight speed. 50. Carlos Sainz and Luis Moya were also determined to try and improve on their restart position, but in the Spaniard's case, it was really going according to plan. I have continued straight in a junction. I thought the road was straight. I stole the engine, reverse. So Sainz dropped two places to seventh. So small were the gaps between the drivers. Colin McRae, though, fared much better. He knew that Freddie Loix's second place was within reach. Richard Burns' time is on your screens as a comparison. And six right. And opens. Into six left over crest. And right tightens to five minus, and six left opens long. Okay, nine tenths of a second quicker than Burns. McRae was now the fastest so far. But what did this man do? <laughs> Likes had been one of the sensations of day one, but things were now very different. The road conditions wouldn't help Freddie anything like as much. From rechts and rechts daarvoor kort even links stop. En rechts daarvoor komt even links stop, om 50, rechts uit, direct naar 120, flying finish, om 50 links daarvoor. Ja. Nearly 13 seconds down on the Ford, the Hyundai oh, slipped to like. third place, the praise attack was underway. We didn't make any mis mistakes, but the uh, calling was just a little bit quicker, I think, yeah. So, uh, okay, I had a good run, but, <laughs> sorry, but uh, I couldn't go quicker. But the running leader was still to go. Could Marco Martin rise to a praise challenge? Flat left into five minus right. Twenty-three plus left long. And three plus right. Twenty. Three plus left heavy. Four right. And four left heavy. seconds separated the two Fords. It was in fact Petit Selberg, 17th overnight, who was fastest on the stage. Six left half long, opens 15. This time we'll let Phil Mills tell you the time. 14.00. of just how much time Sainz lost with his excursion, we'll call in the services of the virtual spectator. Solberg has already headed off into the distance, but Sainz is neck and neck with McRae and Burns. Then comes the mistake. And even though it doesn't look like much, just watch the string of cars which go past before the focus gets going again. That's how close things are these days. That's what happens when you make even the slightest error.
position at the head of the leaderboard was the same. Martin still 51 seconds or so clear, but second, third, fifth and sixth places had all changed hands. Sainz was now seventh, fueling at his mistake, but seventh to tenth were covered by just 30 seconds, so there was still plenty to fight for. Skoda's challenge was led by 14th place Tony Gardemeister, the fit ahead of both Kenneth Eriksson and Stig Blomqvist, despite worrying about an upset stomach. One day, of course, we're all willing for Freddie Lloyds to continue his day one performance, but maybe that pressure is beginning to get to the Belgian. Links rechts twin, if ik min breed. Links, ik heb al lang gezegd, hè. Like Sainz on the previous stage, that spin dropped Lloyds to 7th, allowing Richard Burns into the podium positions for the first time. Keep an eye on the clock for an idea of just how much time that spin cost Freddy. Long, 40, fast left in and fast left plus 50, fast left, minus in, 30 feet to right, tightens long. This time, Sainz made no mistakes. Neat and tidy on stage eight, he and Lewis Moyer were third fastest, snatching a place back from Grumman in the process. Vale, izquierda acá corta de tierra, abrirse uno. Derecha izquierda calenta corta, Sazar. The next Peugeot driver on Sainz's hit list was Harry Rovampera. Now just 1.1 seconds ahead of the Ford, his 206 suffered a puncture on the stage, which cost a few precious seconds. It was, though, still a fall by two. Colin McRae and Nicky Grist were fourth fastest, losing around six seconds to the rally leaders. Slope four left over Grist, Titans. It just slope four right. And left Titans to slope four into four left, opens long, and six right, into six right over crest. But it seemed Marco Martin and Michael Park had risen to their teammates' challenge. Quickest so far, their lead had now grown to over 57 seconds, but there was still Solberg to come. The Subaru driver had climbed three places thanks to winning stage seven, now had one eye on the top ten. But one of the most bizarre incidents of the season was about to hit Solberg and Phil Mills. Kevin left loose. Titans, 30. Right, get the through for the steering. Get the through for the steering. It's loose. Two right minus Titans keep in. 30. Get the through for the steering. Yeah. It's in the back. Okay, let's see what I can do. As Mills searches for the onboard toolkit, Solberg has to drive blind with no pace notes. However, the thought of the steering wheel coming off in his hands means living without notes for a while isn't such a problem. Incredibly, despite these amazing scenes, the pair was second fastest on the stage, climbing to 11th place. But just a look at the wheel move on the next road because section. Because getting the tools. Because it's completely loose. It's difficult to see when you're driving that that is loose there. I thought it was in the middle there. I told Phil to go back in the car and get the tools, and he 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 got the tools, and we tightened it. But it was already tightened, so it was the other bolts around the steering wheel. So we drove approximately seven k uh, kilometers without uh, pace notes, just because of the safety that we didn't take any risks because of the steering wheel. The last stage, the the beginning part. Uh, it was so difficult for me, uh, I couldn't find uh, the, the proper gear, uh, first and second was too short, third he couldn't manage anymore to climb up and uh, I lost time like hell, uh, get a little bit frustrated, make a spin and then down, down uh, I took back uh, 12 seconds but uh, okay the time I lost uh, was too much. Mission accomplished this morning, you managed to catch Freddie Loikes. Yeah we passed Freddie quite convincingly, uh, we just need to really keep the pace up now. And 
the times are good, everybody's staying about the same. Uh, Marco had another good time there, but we're quite happy at the moment. What about the complexion of the next couple of stages? We've got Alatia, that's a long one there. No, it's probably my favourite stage in the rally, so I'm looking forward to that. So that will be a big Burns attack? Yeah, every stage is, but maybe a bigger one on this one. Stage 9, in fact, would hold mixed fortunes for the Peugeot team. Marcus Kronholm, fourth quickest on the stage, found himself elevated to third place, thanks to the misfortune of others. <laughs> Sainz and Moya hadn't enjoyed the first day, but were now engaged in a battle with Bronho for third, and a scrap for a podium place is exactly the situation Ross enjoys. His teammate, on the other hand, is at his happiest when he sets his victory as a possibility. The second fastest on the stage, frightening our cameraman in the process, Colin McRae thought he'd still be in second place, but when the clock stops, just look at the position which appears. Six left over crest, keep out, and six left over jump, maybe, 100. Six left over crest, okay. Next through is Loix, sixth fastest, but by now back up to fifth overall. The reason for all the changes is that the man who'd led the rally since the very first left stage right. was in trouble. Yeah, all right, but minus left for it, maybe. Marco's face said it all. What a cruel way to lose the lead, while what remained of the tyre told its own story. Well, basically we got the puncture, just, just like that, without hitting anything, and just, just it was so bad that we had to stop and change it because otherwise we would have broken the suspension or something. So it's a long way to go. So just many minutes, I think, because it's not so easy with that. We've gained the lead, unfortunately. Uh, Marco had a puncture there, which could have happened to anyone. The stage condition is pretty bad, so all you can do is go as quick as you can and hope that you don't pick up a puncture. Stage 10 was cancelled for safety reasons. The organisers concerned about the number of spectators at certain points and the number of parked cars close to the road. So the crews could head for Parnassos and service. Nicky into the lead due to the misfortune of Marco Martin. It is unfortunate, but a lead is a lead and at least it's in the same team, so something to be thankful for. The gap is very, very similar to Colin. I think we took one second off him over that, nearly 40 kilometres. So he's pushing very hard as well. Uh, we just got to try and do the same thing on the next two and, and all the stages tomorrow. It's going to be tough to, to beat him. Though. Can you hang on to that lead? Richard said he's going to go for it. Uh, I think he's been going for it all day and we've been with him all the way. So, of course, uh, nothing failing or nothing letting us down. I'm sure we can. Freddie, after those problems this morning, back up to fifth, that's not bad after Elatia. No, it's, it's not bad at all and uh, we did a quite good time on the, on the long stage and uh, I was uh, very lucky to be on the finish because the last five, six kilometres in that stage, uh, I were all left uh, out of shock and uh, we had no uh, front left shock anymore, so uh, I was very happy when they cancelled the next stage. What happened on stage nine? Uh, all about 15 case after the start is uh, one setup and uh, there's more rats uh, right front tires going, uh, uh, going outside the rims. 
Stage 11 was the second run of the day through the Box IT stage, but a lot of loose stones had been thrown up by the earlier run. The driving line, though, was a lot clearer than it had been in the morning. Marcus Gronholm almost 22 seconds faster than he'd been seven hours before. Kaheksan, ja Vaseri miinus kirraa soppuu kivi. Seitsemän, ja Vaseri helppo. Richard Burns lost eight seconds to his colleague, so the gap between second and third was now down to less than 20 seconds. Chris Tain fast right plus opens. 70. Flat left. 150. Harry Rohan Perez's front wing bore evidence of a collision, but whatever it was hadn't cost that much time. Sixth fastest on the stage, the Finn was still sixth overall. So much for the Peugeots, what about the Fords? Sainz, seventh quickest, dropping over 11 seconds to the charging Gronholm, while McRae, the rally leader, was fourth fastest, taking another five seconds off the chasing Burns. After yesterday's performance by Martin and Reutz, today's leaderboard looked a lot more familiar. So, yet again it seemed it would be the battle of Britain for victory. McRae for Ford, fighting with Burns for Peugeot. Yeah. You're done as well, sir. Less than a minute now covered first to fourth places, with everyone evenly spaced out, 20 seconds or so apart. The real battle, it seemed, would be between Solberg, now eighth, and Sebastian Loeb, just 4.4 seconds ahead. The devastated Marco Martin, meanwhile, was still ninth. Stage 12 was the day's last, another repeat, and so another cleaner road surface. Gronholm was clearly a man on a mission. He was over 10 seconds faster than Burns, despite overdoing things on one corner. Burns, though, wasn't exactly hanging around, but despite going six seconds faster than he'd done in the morning, he'll start the final day less than 10 seconds ahead of his teammates. In the meter right, Titans long. A little of the pressure was taken off the two Peugeot drivers when Carlos Sainz lost around 40 seconds with gearbox problems. Para derecha buena más corta. Para izquierda izquierda casi tierra. No such worries for the rally leader. Colin McRae was fourth fastest and knows he's now on the verge of taking his fifth win in Greece. Day three's four stages, now all that stand in his way. Quickest on the stage was the other Ford Focus, that of the unlucky Marco Martin. 24 left into three plus right. Sounds like a rear wheel drive car. This time it was the turn of Freddy Loix to have problems. He lost around 20 seconds after breaking the accident suspension. He was still in fifth place, but day two hadn't gone anything like as well as day one. Colin McRae will start the final day with a lead of over 32 seconds, while Burns will be scrapping with Grunholm in the morning. Behind the top six, Solberg and Martin have both passed low, with the others now too far back to stand any real chance of getting into the points. Uh, for Victor, you know, I think we are too far away from Colin. He, lost, he lost too much on the first day. Uh, to be honest, Colin's been a fair bit quicker than us today. Um, he's taken about 15 seconds off us over the day, so it's going to be tough to, to beat him tomorrow. Colin, there's a lead of 32 seconds enough to win this rally tomorrow? Uh, no, not at all. No, um, OK, if we have no problems, then judging on the pace today, possibly it is, but I'm sure uh, Richard and Marcus are going to push very hard tomorrow, and it's so easy to have a, a problem, a puncture, or anything like that so that it's not it's not comfortable we certainly need it certainly for colin and the manufacturers uh, at least it would certainly keep the championship alive and uh, we you know we got the the bonus in in argentina but really obviously we you know we do need a minimum of 10 points here so clearly mccray and grist know what they have to do they were in a similar position in cyprus in april but threw away the win with two accidents on the final day can they do it this time 
Join us tomorrow to find out.